Uh, I, I believe it was while the arrest was taking place. So at least that in my first knowledge wasn't a uh, news report. It was uh, two officers just letting me know what was taking place and give me some, some details, not at all, obviously. Did they suggest to you that other players might be involved? They did not. Gary, what is the NCAA Big Ten in, in Iowa test for? And is it all the same thing, both performance enhancing and, I guess, recreational drugs? That's a good question. The, the NCAA lists, and you'd have to go to their manual, but lists, you know, they're, they're focused mostly on competitive uh, advantages or disadvantages. They do indicate, and I think Fred had looked up the list last night just so I could be refreshed, that they do uh, possibly test for marijuana and some other street drugs. But I know their primary focus uh, is competitive advantage or disadvantage. Same with the Big Ten. Uh, our campus drug testing, Dell, I think I'm right, this includes alcohol, uh, as well as marijuana and, and all the other street drugs. So ours is a little bit more focused on, um, you know, alcohol and, and street drugs. We do include uh, enhancement drugs in, in our test, however. Gary, Gary the, the other thing that sort of relates to a previous question is we also test, as does the NCAA and Big Ten for masking agents. So agents that student athletes may take to, you know, get a, a negative test on <coughs> Gary, you talked about policies and procedures. Uh, what are some of the policies and procedures when it comes to drug testing? Is there a big sign on the football complex that says drug testing today, or do you yank players out of practice and, and have them take urine? I think the best person to address how we do it is Dell, if, if that's okay, uh, because he, he and the staff administrator, uh, and then we hire these students who do it. So I'm uh, Dell, if you wouldn't mind uh, talking about that. So th these tests are unannounced. Um, the drug testing coordinator and the professional health science students will come to a practice or team meeting and they will pull the student athletes out of the um, practice or team meeting. And that's usually arranged with the coaches prior uh, to that day. But the student athletes are not aware that testing are going to be occurring, and so they are random, uh, random tests. Who has, uh, who is allowed to have knowledge of those results once they come out, positive or otherwise? The the results, as Gary said, come back. Well, I should go back. They are sent with a number code on them to an independent outside lab. There are no names attached. Uh, and the results come back in the same coded manner. Um, the drug testing coordinator is the only person that has the list of names that correspond with those numbers. And if there is a positive result, she informs me, we inform the athletic administration, we inform the coach, and we then inform a substance abuse counselor who will do the evaluation and treatment of that student athlete. So the first step is not suspension. I mean, it's conceivable someone could flunk a drug test and still be competing the same way. Is that accurate? It, it depends on each individual situation. Uh, we, we look at each individual and then take that into the context of the code of conduct. Uh, but there is, there certainly is a situation if someone had never had an issue, never had uh, problem that they could go through this evaluation. Once that evaluation is complete, depending on what that finds, they could continue to comp compete. Is there kind of a, a, I hate to say, you know, three strikes and you're out policy, but it, does the code of conduct specify at a certain point if you have come up positive on so many tests, this is exactly what happens no matter what the situation? It's it's not said that way, but absolutely, there's a there's a scale, uh, and and if you're interested, again, Fred. Uh, knows the code uh, more off the top of his head than I do, but but generally, absolutely, there's a there's an escalating uh, process that we go through the code. I don't know, Fred, if you want to add anything to that. No, you, you're absolutely correct. Okay. We we go by offenses. The first offense is, is some assessment and to see if the student is healthy enough to get back into practice and so forth. And then when it's a second offense, that's where suspensions start playing into. So a second positive test is automatic suspension. Yes. Yes. 10%. I think it's all public record. Okay. I think, you know, it's all in our code and in our drug testing. And I'll just inter interject too, just again to draw some separation between these these players. Uh, what happened last week is public record, and 
you know, the other stuff, again, there are a lot of contributing factors to the decisions I make about a player being suspended at any time. And, uh, you know, again, I'll go back to Jewel. He was suspended for the first game of the season last year. That was directly the result of an incident back in June. So, you know, just, I, I, I want everybody to be careful not just to lump all this together, which I get the sense that's going on right now. And uh, I think every story is a little bit individually different. Have you noticed a difference since hiring a life skills?